Hi everyone, I have a special guest today who desires to remain anonymous because this person has very important stories to tell. Uh, so this person um, that I met uh, through my channel, um, my YouTube channel, um, draw my attention on one of the experiences it had and then we had a communication uh, by email and um, we need to do this interview because this person has a lot of things to say to the world so uh, we will go by your name star child um, and you are so on the outward you would classify yourself as a civilian light worker you are a grid worker and an animal communicator. In the past decade, you have been employed as firefighter and tree planter. And through this warrior lifestyle, you said that you came to learn and realize that you could create weather, talk to animals and access the earth grids. And um, something beautiful you, you wrote to me is that you have had as teachers um, North Pacific humpbacks, spinner dolphins in Maui, Hawaii, grizzlies and whales in Alaska, Sasquatch, light ships, and earth based elementals and allies. And it is your intention to bring this awareness to the public, the awareness, I suppose, of our interconnection with, um, with the universe. But first, um, I may ask you about your experience and this particular subject we're going to talk about. Uh, you had contacts with uh, sheep. Um, could you um, tell us about this experience, please? Excellent. Hello, Elena, and to your guests. So let's jump right into it. Um, most of us in this position have had some sort of experience in since childhood and seems to be somewhere around eight. I think I heard you had experience around nine. Uh, mine was around eight, that would be 1981. And um, funny enough, it was a Christmas Eve experience and I saw a ship. Uh, I lived in the Canadian North. I saw a ship out across a vast expanse of land. And I was fascinated with UFOs and Sasquatch as a child, just obsessed with it. So here I was having an experience face to face with a ship quite a distance away, um, half a kilometer. But nonetheless, there was a being in the window and it was looking at me. He was looking at me. And that was my initiation to this is more than real, something that is not discussed. Uh, back then, it was much worse than it is now as far as discussing such things. So as a small child, uh, no one believed me and it's just a dream and it's not real, da, 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 this kind of thing. So that was my entry point. And then that led on to experiencing um, the natural world. I was out in the bush in Canada. So I was out there with my dog. Uh, I would hunt for food as a child. Um, we were in a middle class family, but that was part of this Canadian lifestyle. So in that, I mentioned the hunting because um, you start to learn from the forest at a young age in these styles of instructions, uh, especially with the light ships and these elementals. So, and it's unassuming, you just think you're out there wandering around in the bush with your dog. Um, and these essences started to come in more and more. And that transpired into a bunch of these adventures that you mentioned in the uh, bio. Um, so it led me to uh, go up to Alaska where I was guiding uh, grizzly bear tours and was able to sit with the grizzly bears and learn their actual language, learned them as creatures, uh, Maui, Hawaii. I swam underwater and shot video uh, on tourist ships and was able to get three seasons of FaceTime with whales and dolphins 
which was um, now that there's the extraterrestrials right there. <laughs> They're amazing. So, wow. yeah, so these experiences were sort of building me up and building me up. Uh, and then fast forward into the last decade, say, um, from about 2007 till present moment, um, my contact experiences were varied over these times. You see lights in the, in the sky and have uh, telepathic dialogue, but it was always sort of half, um, half believed not a full immersion into these very powerful um, conversations. So in the last decade, all these ship experiences started coming in. Uh, I had become a tree planter and a firefighter and started gaining more and more of these experiences becoming more and more real. I sent you the video of um, firefighting with UFOs from 2014, where what I experienced was uh, a light ship was caught on camera on the Canadian news. And uh, a day later, I showed up on that very site as a firefighter leading a crew. And then secretly I, under the firefighter, I was doing grid work, um, healing the earth and working with the energy lines. So um, sacred work. So uh, in that experience, I, I, I had a three or four day experience of communicating with these beings, doing grid work on healing um, the bad things that were going on in that area, and then experiencing uh, a weather anomaly where I was instructed three days before on what to do. And a weather anomaly, um, what I experienced was the lake humidifying into a huge storm cloud and then dumping rain down onto the fire, putting it out completely. Um, and we had to evacuate the mountain, it rained so hard. So um, wow. to, to give you an idea of how that timeline sort of lurks before we go further into some of the light ship stories. Yeah, so that sounds so interesting. Yeah, and uh, so those experiences uh, led to 2016 uh, where I had the quite the light ship experience you'll like this one <laughs> so notice the these experiences for those um, who are new to this or, or or those who've had these experiences that know about it it's quite profound you have a lot of symbolism and um, symbols before and after point being they can see time, past, present, and future. So they'll drop symbols in. And one of these symbols was the date December 5th, 2016, which was a uh, heads up for, I think it was two years later, 2017, de December 5th, the um, funeral of a famous president where somebody got some notes. It was uh, on the 5th of, of the 17th of December. And this was... Uh, December 5th, 2016. So I didn't know that then, but my point being, there'll be a bunch of symbols in this that, that come in. So I'm sitting in my house. This is commonly how my experiences go. And I'll get uh, what I call a, a tap on my shoulder. It's not a literal tap on the shoulder, but it's a telepathic message uh, saying, come outside. So I got the tap on the shoulder and I went outside and I looked around and uh, I said, where are you? And they said, look to the Pleiades and there's the Pleiades shining bright, so beautiful. Boom, there's a ship, there's a light ship. And I go, oh, hello, you know, and we're, I'm very friendly with these energies. They've been around me for quite some time. So it's like an old friend. Uh, and I was very excited. And I said, hello, you know, nice to see you. And I joked, are you coming down? Because usually it's just a few blinks in the sky and they, they whiz off to another place. Uh, and this time, I, what I witnessed was um, you're looking up into the sky. It would be like a very bright star like Venus. And then I saw this ship, this light ship, corkscrew down at a very uh, slow rate. So picture a light white ball spiraling down slowly 
from the Pleiades right into my backyard. So uh, my backyard at the time was a huge mountainside. Um, it was a wild land on the side of a mountain, cliffs and stuff like that. It was very beautiful off the grid, nature, uh, natural setting. So the ship is spiraling down into my backyard. And I'm like, oh my God, this is, this is happening. I've dreamed of this day. Every <laughs> light ship UFO person has dreamed of this experience and it, it was happening to me. Uh, and my wife at the time was sleeping in the house or, or I should say she was meditating. Um, and this will make more sense later. I just wanted to mention that. So the ship comes down and what I'm looking at is an orange ball a hundred feet across so a, a luminous orange ball a hundred feet across uh and then it it turns off this orange sphere this hundred foot orange ball whoop, and there is a ship as plain as day and right in front of me the most beautiful elegant ship you've ever seen um i've never seen a ship like it, it it's I'll explain it to you. So um, the normal sort of UFO shape where you've got the disc and then a hump on top, it was that, but the curve was so elegant, you could barely see the hump on top. And then the sides that would normally go down to a point became smooth, rounded edges, like a very elegant sculpture, something so out of this world and so familiar it was absolutely extraordinary so there i am staring at a ship and uh, the occupant of the ship um, has certain telepathic leeway with me so they can signal me to do something and what they did is they got me laughing my ass off because um the field from this ship is uh, very powerful when you get right next to them. It's extremely powerful yeah. and it can disturb your body. Um, and I've, I've learned that the painful way with trying to be helpful, showing people the UFO and they go a little nuts when they get too close. <laughs> so, um, so there's a ship and there's the occupant uh, inside the ship communicating with me. And they, I'm seeing a full metal ship like it's completely metal. It had uh, some lights that would go around it, but you could not see lights. It was just emanating through the metal. And then that stopped and these, uh, this window just appeared. So there's like metal there on the top, top of the UFO hump. And then there's a, a window there all of a sudden. It opens up and there's a backlit figure. Uh, a human figure looks exactly like my frame. So you know, I'm not looking at a squid person or something like that. It's just, it's a normal human being. So that was easy to take because I'm in a high stress moment. As fantastic as it sounds, it's very um, shocking on the senses. Yeah. And this being um, started waving the ship. So it wobbled like a saucer on the ground. Does that make sense? It's sort yes. of rotating like that. And uh I was like, yeah. what are you doing? You're like, you're going to crash you're right next to the ground. And he, he sort of laughed at me. He was waving my father when he used to be a pilot. Uh, he, my father would fly over my head and wave his wing. So uh, this ship was sort of connecting to that essence of, hello, here I am. Ha, ha, ha. Yes. And then we got into some really intense stuff. Um, there was uh, instruction on certain universal paradigms nothing too fancy but simple stuff that i was working on this on the time I was having some trouble with my heart and opening up my heart and uh, i was very interested in a um, diamond hearts co conversation in my head about opening my heart into a crystallized form so i was learning about this subject and working on that at the time and this ship um, projected an image of a diamond light, a piercingly white diamond appeared in front of the ship and then escalated into very bright light, but like a sword. 
like a single spire of white light. And uh, that was a signal to me that this is the correct direction, keep moving in these, these paradigms. And uh, there are a couple other secret things, personal things I won't share on that, but it was quite, quite profound and touching for what felt like a, a family member coming down to me. Then I also noticed um, the ship seemed to be, the ship seemed to know me. And that was very confusing at first. So I'm, I, I'd heard about organic technology in, in some of the circles out there, but I, I didn't really have a, a good reference for it. Um, so when this ship was, it felt like a pet. It felt like a good friend. Uh, and this is a very advanced piece of technology. I got to peek, um, get a glimmer of, of what this machine could do. Um, but the point in that I wanted to make is I think it might've been toned to my DNA specifically. Mm. I was like, hmm, very, very interesting. Um, then as the occupant was um, teaching me, I was so excited. I wanted to share it with my wife. So I, I, I ran inside the door, said, get out here quickly, very panicked. So she would know that, you know, there's a, something very serious out there. And she, she ran to the door. And as soon as her hand touched the door handle, uh, a vortex opened up and it was gone. It went off. It was a star all of a sudden. It was there. It went into the vortex. It was gone. Um, so it was just meant for me. Uh, yeah. As I mentioned earlier, these experiences, um, although I may want to share them at the time, they're not necessarily meant for other people. It's specifically yeah. for the individual. Um, and that December 5th, 2016 set off the events up to this present point, as we all know, we've been through some pretty amazing global events. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, oh my gosh, thank you for, for sharing this story. Uh, what really um, appeals to me in your story is the similarities with so much of my personal experiences with mm. this type of sheep. When I was rescued at the age of nine by um, people from the Pleiades, it was the same ship. It appeared first, I, uh, it appeared in a glowing orange uh, haze and the ship then was, <laughs> yes, it was orange. And when it, it speeded up, before it, it speeded up and it went like, like this in the sky, um, it changed color from orange to yellow and white and uh, but the ship was exactly as you describe it it was a flying saucer but very elegant very elegant oh. with a bump under uh, above and a bu bump under and but the bump under was really barely uh, visible very slight and on the top, it, it was very elegant. And the, oh. the, the most uh, approaching um, picture I could, I could find is this one, but it was more elegant than that even, you know? Yes. Um, so, and it was um, Pleiadian people inside. So um, mm -hmm. that really appealed to me. It was amazing. Um, oh, that just makes my heart gush when you say that to identify <laughs> yes this was the a scout ship from the the the, the federation they, they they told me afterwards and it was a mixed crew but uh it was pleiadian technology and as well they explained to me because i had many contacts uh afterward throughout the years and they showed mm. me a few technical things about this ship and effectively they told me that the the ship is alive it's allotted with consciousness it's not an entity but it's conscious and it's in relay it's connected to the the, the consciousness of the pilot that's how they navigate and uh, it yeah when you say a pet 
it's the feeling I got when I was inside <laughs> one one day when um, uh, this um, extraterrestrial being who rescued me showed me was the captain of this ship. He showed me, he, he made me sit in in the seat. Uh, pilot seat and uh, uh, said to me, uh, you can't do it because you don't have the connection, but this ship is alive. And the way he was talking, it was as well um, mental mind uh, communication as well. I could feel the ship and I had this, this, um, I, this, this thought like a pet, a pet like that you drive, you know, that, and that carries you. Um, so, yes, amazing. <laughs> uh, that's wow, 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 thank you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> that's amazing. And that, that's, I, I knew, I knew that was going to be an amazing interview and uh, conversation. Um, mm. Any, any, anything else you want to say about this experience with sheep before? Um, I don't know. Um, well, let's just continue with yeah. that story. Um, I have a lot of stories. <laughs> but let's, free. Just, let, let's, let's just continue with this one. So that was what happened after this story I've just expressed to you. That was what happened after. And this is what happened before. So... As I mentioned, I was living uh, an off the grid, straw bale, timber frame home I built with uh, my partner out in the bush. And it was just the most beautiful place you could imagine, you know, jagged mountain peaks above, below, all around you. Um, so these, these natural areas, the forest itself is sort of landlocked which means it's some of the last refuges for animals such as cougars, lynx, bobcats, and bears, and all the other friends of the forest deer. And uh, some of the forest people, they call them Sasquatch, but I call them forest keeper. And this would be, for people who aren't familiar with this energy, this would be... Um, the steward of the forest, the, the bush boss, the bush boss knows everything what's going on in the bush. And they just happen to uh, like our friends <laughs> who fly in ships uh, and communicate with them, uh, which I didn't fully know. Right around this time I'm mentioning, I, I, I sort of made the, the solid affirmation and connection that wow these these two entities are working together heaven and earth is unified through this alliance and i think I, it must have been about five or six years i've been working with this forest keeper energy so that involved grid work of um sending my prayers out uh, on to the land and around the globe um, and for those who aren't familiar with that uh, picture yourself standing in front of a mountainside and then you could look at the mountain and take a snapshot of it and then go into it with your consciousness, sort of like this remote viewing or by location. Um, rain dance would be another example of this where you become, you become one with the forest in a very big way and you can find things and that came that was very handy for my employment um, in the past as well, as for mentioned. But back to the story, working with uh, this forest keeper energy, doing grid work, I'm putting prayers into the earth on my land. And it happened to be a ceremonial night. I'm sure the moon was at its perfect point or something. And um, I was out there with my feathers and my white tail deer, deer horns praying to the Pachumama, praying to the Mother Earth, um, working with these forest energies and these star energies. And um, at that time, I, there was a very troubling carrier wave coming over the grid 
through the human consciousness and mind. So I was very adamant about healing the world and just a great urge, a great need to save this world, ourselves, all of that. So I was putting down my prayers into the earth with this um, on a special earth node, a ley line point, um, like the nervous system pressure points of the body on the earth. And I said, my people are anchored in the earth, thinking of all these people that are working at this time to heal the earth. And I had, it must have been a hundred ships. It looked like a hundred ships. It's hard to tell when these moments happen. Um, consciousness gets heightened, uh, senses escalate. You can see and hear in different ways. I'd call it the avatar state or something like that. Uh, it's very amazing seeing yourself in that space. Um, it's sort of like taking the veil off 3D and you're in the 5D or some metaphor like that. So I had a, a, hundreds of ships were crawling above my head. I guess they wanted to see what I was doing was making wow. some profound, profound effect, some profound effect, but whatever prayers were coming on. And keep in mind, it's, it's not just me doing this. It's me and these energies I'm working with. Um, I don't want to make myself out to be something I'm not. I'm, <laughs> I'm just a normal human. No, no. And, <laughs> and all of a sudden, um, for anyone who's seen the Northern Lights or Aurora Borealis, sometimes these moments produce what looks like the Northern Lights. It's uh, an energy coming from the heaven in a green flare, and it whips around like a little ribbon in the sky. Well, well, this happened that night, but it wasn't a little ribbon in the sky. It looked um, like the whole sky lit up in green flame for a moment. It looked like being under the ocean with the waves rolling across wow. your head. Wow. Except it was green northern lights. Wow. And um, I've had this happen to me. Uh, one other time before, so I sort of got a sense of what this means on a grid worker, UFOs are everywhere kind of scale. Yes. Wow. <laughs> so I somehow sort of knew what to do. And so that was the, the precursor to that light ship corkscrewing down from the Pleiades and suggesting to go with the diamond light and all the other things he spoke to me uh and the initiation of this path that we're on right now which i did not understand at that time i knew something was up but i didn't know what we're about to face as a society as a culture yes and what time what was it in 2016 wasn't it 2016 december 16. 5th. yes yeah. that's very impressive yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, so back to, I made the original statement about the December 5th and um, December 17th, or I might have that wrong. Maybe it was the 18th, uh, December 5th, where the popular president uh, had the notes passed around um, who died. Uh, same date, interesting coinkydink. <laughs> so mm. that was a heads up towards this symbolic arena that would lead into our present moment, which we are understanding more clearly now, um, as, as a direction, as a, a grid worker, I'm kind of a hunter. I fly around and sniff things out. I hunt for things. I look for disharmonies. I look for places to, that I can anchor light or resolve an issue, you know, so let's say, um, there was a fire here, uh, September, I think, right in my backyard, 20 kilometers away. We had a huge forest fire. And as a grid worker and a firefighter, I, I wasn't on site at this fire this year, uh, but I was 20 kilometers away, uh, touching it for, from that angle. And you just feel disharmonies yes. when the fire burns. You feel the memories come out. And I'll give a, a quick story about that. Um, the women of the mountain, this, this mountain that burned a uh, hundred years ago or more, 
um, it was a native village and you could imagine the horrible, horrible stories of what happened to that native village. Mm -hmm. So as the fire's burning, these memories are releasing and I would project myself to listen to some of these stories. And you'd see visions of the women of the tribe and the atrocities that were done there and the men of the tribe and the atrocities that were done there. And one night I was sharing what I felt uh, with my neighbor about what I just spoke to you, you know, and I was telling him the story of the, the women up high on the mountain or on the rock and they were scared and just speaking their story to my friend in mm. real time. And um, after the story was done, we, we both spoke of resolve and peace to the mountain and the heart coming out of the mountain, the love coming out of the mountain. And then we had uh, a couple ships come over and fire some sort of laser into that spot we're speaking of. So there we are having, yeah, so there we are having this playful dialogue. He, he, he thought it was hilarious. He didn't know what to make of it because uh, <laughs> it's quite, quite profound when, when your, let's say, childhood fantasy story has a profound physical real-time event. And, you know, at the exact moment you end the story, a ship flies in and shoots that spot you're talking about. But it makes sense from a grid worker point of like, ah, you hit the spot. That's the target. Release. Let that be done. Let the timelines or whatever story is working in that experience be healed. You know, release the pressure, release the tension, release the heat. Amazing. Wow. 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 You had obviously a connection with, because you were connected to the grid of the earth, probably it was easy for you to be connected to the sheep working. You know, these sheep, um, I know there are some of them working on the, the grid of the earth, the, mm. the upper layer, uh, atmospheric layer. So it's connected to the ground, as we always say, as above, so below. Um, yes. And you're in, you, if you're in connection with the ground, I suppose you're also in connection with the projection of the grid uh, in the orbit of Earth and these sheep as well, you are totally able to see them. It's fascinating. It really is. And I'm just as curious on who the heck am I? <laughs> as I'm piecing this story together, I, I honor your journey for that as well, because it, it's quite, it's quite profound to have sort of vague inclinations towards shamanism or whatever you your practice is and then things happen where you might brush it off to the side say oh yeah that time where we saw the green column of green flame shooting up into the sky all three of us together and uh i sort of get a sense of what that means and the two other people are completely in shock and we'll never speak of it uh, ever again. You know, as an, ex an, as an example of the profound realities that we bump into along this path. And to, to realize like, wow, we individuals, I as an individuals can do profound things, um, which would almost seem like we're coming into a time of legends or something of such where we, um, activate into these spaces where uh, these abilities become more and more pronounced and we can teach each other to escalate them. Yes, listen, this totally makes sense to me. It's times, the times of the prophecies, all the prophecies, it's now, it's a portal, you know, we, it's the in-between moment. Um, it's like dawn or dusk, it's the portal, the, the, mm. the precise liminal moment be in between two different things um, levels or eras uh, it's when a portal opens and I you probably know I'm a shaman as well I've been trained in mm. shamanism since I'm a child and I've always been able to see <laughs> these things and yeah. so I'm really know very well what you're talking about and shamans are travelers we are mm. able to transcend planes of densities uh, even interdimensional sometimes 
yes. we can do that and that's why we are uh it's it's easy for our friends upstairs well as i call to co communicate with us and to make themselves visible to us uh, because it's easy for us and it's easy as well for us to remote view or to go out of our avatar flesh and just go wherever we want it's something mm -hmm. we do naturally so it's easy for them to communicate with beings like us i suppose um, you were talking about the, um, the, 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 the hunter and the keeper of the woods. This is mm -hmm. totally um, in my druid traditions because I studied to be a druid as well. And this, we there is an archetype entity which is called the, the hunter. Uh, it's uh, Kerninos, the, the garden, the lord of wildlife, the keeper of the forest, and it's a shaman uh, entity. It's an archetype with a deer, deer horn. It's the stag man, and <laughs> he is the stag, and he's the shaman. He keeps the tree of knowledge, the shamanic tree, the portal, and um, he, he protects all the wildlife and the animals. It's called as well the Lord of the Animals and the hunter, not the hunter that kills the animals, but the, the hunter, um, the, the quest, the quest seeker, you know, the vision quest um, uh, adventurer, hunter for mm. answers, you know. And, mm. um, and you're in Canada and you're with these local legends, not legends, but um, connection and... Uh, um, I'm in Ireland and I know we have the same um, understanding and it is really fascinating. Wow. Kerninen, am I saying that correctly? Kerninos, Kerninos, C-E-R-N-U-N-N-O-S. This is the um, Greek version, uh, normal version. Everybody knows him, but the, the Celtic name is Hern, H-E-R-N-E. -E. Hern. 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 Excellent. Yes. Well, that's, well, that's very interesting, <laughs> I must say. Um, I was, quick story on the, uh, the elk antler <gasps> man, Kernan, Kernan. <laughs> Kernanos, so, yes. Yeah. Kernanos. Um, I was working, I was, I've done some healing work for friends occasionally in the past. And I had a dear friend who was having some troubles and I, I wished to do some work with the forest, with the forest keeper and him. It involved his past and his childhood and his timelines of the past. So long story short, I found out, I identified a target within him, which was reptilian, um, which I saw a reptoid with, um, they, they're about five feet tall. They have a little hump on their nose, mm -hmm. just a little bump. It's not the big giant crazy <laughs> sikar, whatever you call them. It's, thing. Yeah, it's just a naga. Yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So those guys, which I wasn't familiar with, I knew about them, but uh there it was. I identified the target and I said, uh, do not initiate contact with this target. It's, it's bad. Yeah. And then I, I, I saw this entity and I was like, oh my God, this is getting very real. You know, my suspicions were correct. Um, and then we did some pretty intense removal clearing work with that energy. And, uh, the, the person I was doing the healing work on saw me with this elk antler head <laughs> thing you speak of. Sort of this, uh, it, it's what it's also called the green man in some mythologies, yes. things like this. Yeah, so this, um, this druidic shamanic creature had inhabited uh, this aspect of me and was shining through, which it feels like at the time when the muse or the spirit comes through me, um, I definitely feel uh, some of these, these frequencies come through. And it was amazing. It, it felt exactly perfect for what um, 
a, a human needs to be like in that space, just in tune with the stars, the forest, the water, reading everything, breathing everything, you know, breathing light, just extremely powerful. Um, yeah, it pr feels pretty profound when those things happen. Yes, yes, you're feeling, you're in connection with everything and it's indescribable feeling. It's just, um, it's, an, it's the, the knowledge, the, the real knowledge to connect with and be it, be the subject you want to know. And that's when you really know about, you know, it's the, the knowledge of the heart of the soul. It's not the, you can read whatever you want in the books or on internet, you'll never know unless mm -hmm. you merge with it and it's agreed exactly it. yes um, go on yeah how how interesting that path is um of the road less traveled um or or nature uh, and the stars instructing you one step at a time yeah uh, very profound very, very profound. profound yes yes so yes we would um you and I would talk hours about these things. But I, <laughs> uh, I, oh, we, we, we have to do another one, maybe, um, yeah. on this conversation. Uh, mm -hmm. Anyway, mm -hmm. anyway. Uh, so um, one of the reasons why I want to um, invite you to share your experience also was about a less fun subject but which is uh, very uh, instructive. Um, the dumps, the deep underground military bases. Um, yes. You've been telling me that you have been um, and remote viewing and as well interacting with the operation in the dumps. Uh, some of ex your experiences uh, are um, of actual actually of actual battle scenes during these operations and in major cities. Um, this is quite mind blowing. So would you please um, uh, explain possible? Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's, uh, that's not going to be fun, but that's, that's, um, that's, it. that's yeah. important. All right, let's do this. It's important for everybody. Yeah. Okay. So where shall I start this? Um, let's roll the time back to December 5th, 2019. So December 5th, 2019, Christmas day before the coronavirus. And uh, I remember it was flu season at the time and there was a real nasty flu going around. And I had some time off for Christmas, a couple of weeks and uh, took a much needed break. And it was a lonely Christmas day. And I walked outside and I looked up into the beautiful starry sky and, and I made a joke. I said, oh, kind of a, kind of a lonely Christmas night. I, maybe somebody will come by and visit me and give me a little present. And then I heard in my head, hang on. Okay, we'll be there in a couple minutes. <laughs> so I ran back inside, uh, got my winter clothes, ran outside and um, looked in anticipation to the sky. And I'm looking up and I'm looking up, looking up. A couple minutes go by and I'm like, are you guys joking around? Like, come on, like, am I just out here by myself? He goes, no, okay, look to the Pleiades. And I look to the Pleiades and I'm waiting, waiting, looking at the Pleiades, waiting. I'm like, come on, like, what's the deal here? And he goes, turn around. I turn around and I see uh, what appeared to be a flotilla of ships, a fleet of ships in the sky. And uh, I just want to mention to the audience first, I'm very familiar with Starlink. I've seen it a bunch of time. Uh, and this was not that. So you're seeing a line of ships in the sky going in a straight line, traveling from the west to the east. And some were moving the opposite direction but most of them were moving in a straight line. And 
I was in awe because I just had someone tell me they were going to come by in a ship to give me a surprise for Christmas. And now I'm looking at what appears to be an entire fleet of ships. And to give you an idea of the length, it was about 10 minutes long, this thing rolled by. And um, 40, 50 ships, I, I didn't count, but there was a ton of them. So I'm looking up and I was like, this is amazing. Um, there really is a war going on. And I just felt compelled to put my hand up to the sky and said, I salute you. And, you know, cap captain salute kind of thing. I salute you. And um, an orange ship manifested right above the fleet and said, no, I salute you. And I just started crying right there. <laughs> I knew something. Friend. Yeah, I knew something was up um, when he stated that. So that was my Christmas present. And I had been preparing myself uh, since midsummer 2019 for a mission on the Australian continent in Uluru, uh, which happens to be a very special energetic spot of the earth. Um, and I'd had uh, a shaman friend who is physically traveling to um, Uluru for uh, a shaman ceremony physically on the ground. So I was preparing myself to project myself there and join in with these shamans for the prayer because I knew it was really, really important. So that led us all into when we had the fires. We all had the fires in Australia and uh, the place is burning to the ground. And I started doing my prayers as I was doing my prayers from here in Canada. They were doing their prayers on the ground there in Australia. And these energies were mixing. I remember that, yes. And then as I'm doing these prayers, um, I'll hint and uh, remember back to the working with the weather and working with ships, like I was expressing um, in the firefighting experience where the ship shot a, a little piece of fire laser into the, the yeah. fire when we were talking. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm doing my prayers from Canada, he's doing his prayers on the ground and there's other parties involved, which I'm not seeing, but I'm aware of. And we were having profound weather of anomalies and events, which would include uh, like hurricane force winds, heavy, heavy, heavy lightning and thunder. Um, and I was also watching on satellite radar to calibrate uh, what was happening on the ground um, to put together the whole story of we're affecting the weather in a profound way. And I could feel the population rising. How could you not, if you're on the ground and you're seeing your homes burning and there's rain coming, you're gonna be praying for rain. People have been doing that for thousands of years. And it's in a very natural part of the human psyche to bring that balance into our ecosystems. So, that led to a, a bunch of fantastic stories with um, Australia um, and we all put the fires out. And the, the classic crowning moment was when the prime minister got on television and specifically demanded for everyone to stop praying for rain. Do you remember that? Yes. Yeah, he, he, he told us to stop. <laughs> so I knew it was working. I knew there was millions of us and I knew what was coming that the, the global mind of humanity and the earth is coming back online. I was describing it as telepathy is coming back online, uh, but it's a very complicated subject as you know. So uh, yes, I, uh, but I saw, yeah. yeah. Um, so that was Australia. So I was, I've got a fleet of ships that just saluted me. 
I'm operating with boots on the ground, um, a fleet of ships, uh, the weather, and a bunch of other things. And then the coronavirus starts hitting very hard. Um, the propaganda from this fiction, this whatever this is, um, was going very hard and I knew what it was and I was not standing for it. And there's, I did a mission on my hometown uh, in the local area I live in. It, it's in a mountainous area and um, there's an old mining town there, which I had a condo in for a brief while. And there's about 3000 miles of tunnel underneath. And I was very interested in exploring these for years. So I was aware of some tunneling in my local area, um, but I also sensed uh, there was a lot more unseen in other locations. You just sort of feel it when you're doing grid work. So we started having earthquakes um, while I was doing missions with weather work. So, and what that would look like is I'm doing healing and prayer. I'm scanning over a specific location, maybe a mountain that I've known for a decade. And I know this mountain very well. And I'm, I'm going over her body and deep into the ground and feeling underneath and sensing things there. Well, we start having earthquakes at the five and 10 kilometer range. And um, these coincided precisely with the weather work with myself and other parties involved. So that sort of gave me an idea of the game plan of what had actually was going on, uh, that there was a silent war that was uh, been going on for quite some time, but specifically in the last couple of years. Uh, and this was going to be something of this nature leading to uh, liberation of the entire planet, not just a localized continent. So that set off me very regularly um, looking at the weather uh, in my consciousness by getting information from my friends and then also physically looking at a satellite weather map on a daily basis. And then I would go into um, my ceremony, my shamanic, uh, I, I start dancing <laughs> to get into my body. And then I find a specific tone. Um, and then I'm able to go there just like in the old days when native people and that's what they do. So um, that started happening and that set off um, uh, an event, which I wrote an article on. Uh, which I'll describe to you now. And I'll first say that I, I posted this article for the few people, probably a couple hundred people out there that have heard this story. It was on Facebook and um, it was very popular for a couple days there. And um, I told some other members of the, the community about this subject. And uh, this wonderful story, this wonderful article that I'd written, um, I'd stashed it in 10 different spots to see if they would delete it. All 10 copies of this article that uh, I'm about to describe you were deleted. So what would be the point in deleting such a thing? Here's the story. So um, I forget the exact date. It's on the uh, picture I sent you of uh, Montauk there. And can you see it in the upper left hand corner? I think it was the 28th of uh, you just you just say that it's in upper left corner, but um while you speak I can um yeah yeah, yeah. anyways it yeah it, this is this is the time for those that remember when the ship's mercy and comfort pulled into the New York City harbor. Um it was right around the time the coronavirus was really getting going and um, New York City was experiencing some great difficulties. So. 
a couple days before. Go ahead. So Sunday, March 29th. There you go. Sunday, March 29th. So two days earlier, on a Friday, I had um, uh, a call for a mission to put my attention on a very specific area. So um, before Chicago, just past Iowa, right around that area of the continental United States. And I put my attention there and uh, there was a big storm brewing. And this storm did not feel like a normal storm. Um, and when, we, when you're working with storms, you're working with uh, weather, weather manipulation. Uh, the, the technology of weather manipulation is all encompassing. Yeah. And yeah. it's very challenging. So um, I felt this energy and I started to chase it. So you go down into the storm. I'll just tell the viewers what this experience feels like. So in my physical location in Canada, um, I'm in my, my ceremony and then a part of me is transferred into this storm at the same moment. And as I go into the storm, I experience many things. It's like you can taste and feel and touch the earth, not only the, the physicality of say a land or a city, but also a timeline, a timescape, possibly something happened in the past there. Um, and then also the experience of lightning, um, very amazing, powerful experience to be a part of a storm and experience that charge of lightning hitting the ground to clear the earth of these things I, I mentioned before. So there I am just past Iowa and I, I go into Chicago and it's, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. I'll just, I'll weave a couple stories uh, from around the continental United States just to save a little time. So um, I went to Chicago and it was horrible. There was things going on underground, uh, it, literal demons. And I'll lose, use the, the term loosely because uh, there's negative people, there's dark entities, there's dark aliens, uh, probably a couple other things I'm not seeing. So that's the experience of when you're going into the city, you're just feeling all these dark targets. And as you feel those dark targets, you're, you're blessing it or painting it with light and cleaning and clearing as you go. And then um, I'll grab a piece from another story here. I went over to uh, Chicago, uh, Buffalo, Buffalo, New York, just before um, New York City there. And I went into that city and it was the same scape. It would look like the tail lights of a car at night. You'd see a highway stretching to infinity. You'd see red lights and white lights, tail lights flowing up and down the highway. And you'd see that spread out all across the checkered uh, cityscape. And now substitute the cars with demons as, as a metaphor of how much darkness or was in some of these battle scenes, you know, it was, it was, it was horrible. It was, the whole place was covered. And this one excerpt from Buffalo, New York, um, there are many shamans from different times working on this operation from all over. But uh, I have a connection to some of the Native American uh, energies there. So picture like Sitting Bull, all those great guys from 100 years ago. Um, all those energies were kind of there represented in this image. And um, they were unifying because they were all fighting and quite upset from the horrors of the past that we've all been through. So they were clearing those horrors from the past to unify, to put their um, indigenous skill together and clear this dark, dark arena. Um, and I saw the image of, of 
buffaloes running through the streets where those those demons were running through the streets before to symbolize uh, what we were doing with this bringing the natural flow back to these areas which is have been corrupted with these grids and these uh, dark forces and these dark ideas and uh, so that was a little image of buffalo and then um, I forgot to mention that at the beginning of this operation my target was Montauk New York so just before I were there I was told Montauk New York was the target and weather can go wherever it wants to go right I didn't expect it to go to Montauk but sure enough it came right to Montauk just up the Hudson in New York City there and this is 48 hours later so I was like wow this is quite serious if you're giving me a mission statement 48 hours before and I'm hitting the exact target you showed me this is a very serious operation now so I chased this storm and it had wound up right past Montauk Point. So the end of Montauk Point heading towards Hudson Harbor, uh, that's where the storm stopped. And I sent you a picture there. You see a little triangle yeah. cloud. Yeah, so uh, it's not that often that clouds make triangle shapes, <laughs> especially when they were spoken of uh, 48 hours earlier. So um, I felt sort of a search and destroy um, kind of flavor to whatever was going on. And I felt compelled to um, scan the Montauk underground. I was, I was guessing, I sort of felt within myself, that there's really nothing to see. I'm just going to fly by there. And if I see anything, I'll, I'll give the heads up. Um, well, there wasn't too much in the Montauk area uh, on the, the surface layers, but I, I didn't realize how much infrastructure uh, was down there. And um, I didn't know at that time, but uh, I started to travel too deep at times. And if you go too deep, um, there's certain technologies and infrastructures and entities that will, that will kill you. You'll be dead or you'll go, cra you'll go crazy and be haunted with a demon a uh, very serious not a joke um yeah uh, so i'm scanning this legendary montauk area where they cracked open some things that they shouldn't have many years ago and um then um you'll have to tell me later what you think of this but um I was projecting myself, I felt a target towards the Hudson River, towards um, Manhattan Island, up the Hudson there, on both sides. So I felt tunnels on both sides, the whole way up, across the whole thing. So as I mentioned before, I was just expecting to feel out for a little hidden crevice of tunnel here or there, and it was everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd done some work on Manhattan uh, earlier. Um, I can't remember if it was the same mission, but um, black box technology. Are you familiar with that? No. Okay, so um, they have these black cubes outside of the banks in Manhattan Island. I think like Chase Manhattan's large cubes. And um, I was looking for a device which uh, I'm calling a black cube, but it seemed to um, take energy from people and put it in a matrix, mm. sort of like a sort of like a loose harvesting device. Um, and I I was hunting and and I found some of this stuff on Manhattan and in other places. Uh, but I was, I made the connection of there's energy being harvested out of this area in a very big way. So um, I'm uncomfortable telling this next part, but I'll just, I'll just go, let it rip. Go, go. It's, it's so, time, time to tell the truth. So walk away. Here it is. Yeah. So as I'm flying through this storm, I'm, I'm riding a dragon. 
is the visual imagery that uh, I use to interface with this technology. So there I am, I'm riding a dragon up the Hudson Harbor, just above the water. And I became enraged and my dragon became enraged at the horrors that I was sensing to the left and the right of me. Uh, I dove into the water and commanded all the waters of life to heal. Just, I was so enraged at what I was feeling and seeing. I just wanted all of nature to conspire on that darkness and end it just to bring the light into the, these hellish spaces. Um, and then as I was charging through the sick and murky waters of the Hudson's River, and it just ran all the way up New York, I, I didn't go that far, I was fo focused on Manhattan Island in that localized area. Um, but I felt um, the operators, the let's just say soldiers or guardians, uh, I did not see their faces or their emblems, but um, I did get a sense of who they work for and what I was involved in there. And I, I projected myself uh, up the Manhattan Island way and I located um, a feeling of children, uh, a feeling of captured. So I flew down there, I flew into the ground um, and I found uh, a small group of children in a corner. It was dark. I couldn't see them. I came up close. There was one girl. Um, I was I was very disturbed at at what I saw. And I projected an image of a, of a teddy bear to this girl and I told her help was coming. And then I, I just got out of there real quick because um, it was a moving operation and there was a lot going on at, uh, at that time. Um, that was my first sort of confirmation as to this isn't just one or two kids this is uh the entire world and the next day after after all of this happened um i was gonna I was gonna review my material so I could remember some more details to express to you, but I think that's all I can really muster out on that mission. Yeah. Because some of the things are pretty horrible and people don't necessarily need to hear them, but hear from the tone of my voice, it's very real. And yeah, yeah, you get it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I it totally relates to um things um my the people i know you know um working to these rescue missions um uh, from from well the extraterrestrial um people i know um they i i did you know uh, thorhan my 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 the one the person i communicate with sometimes um he just can't talk, he just can't speak, and I can feel through him an immense, immense pain to have witnessed things related to children. He won't talk, and one day he told me, um, you don't need to know, because it's not because sometimes we can't speak. It's not because we are not allowed to. It's not that. It's because it is, it has no words. It is unbearable. And you try to speak about it and the words just don't come. 
because it's unspeakable and i totally can understand uh but yes go on go on go on yes agreed uh go on. yeah thanks for thanks for uh stating it that way it's it's very true i actually had so after after all of this happened um i'll go back into the the battle scenes in a second mm -hmm. but um after all of this happened, this was December 25th, 2019 to May 5th, 2020 was the end of my operations. I just collapsed. And I, I've i been dancing around post-traumatic stress for the past five years, like these, these operations and missions. You get knocked down, you get back up, you get healthy again. You get knocked down, you get back up, you get healthy again. You just keep doing this stuff. Um, but after December or... Uh, the end of the operations, May 5th, 2020, I just, I collapsed. Um, my hands would start shaking and I just start crying. And uh, it was that level of post-traumatic stress. Okay? And I have to keep my day job to pay my bills. <laughs> so um, I asked for assistance um, to our friends a couple times. Um, and they hooked me up they hooked me up. Uh, they just smoothed out the memories. I've got my general screen memories without researching my, my documents of what happened. Um, but I can sleep, which is huge. And uh, I, I feel very good, like a normal human being again. Um, for people who don't understand what post-traumatic stress is, which you should by now, <laughs> um, it's, it's deadly. It, at that level it's deadly so i was very grateful for them uh for hooking me up a couple times too and i got to see the inside of a med bed once too so that was very very exciting uh to bring forth um that stuff's real i i'm i'm buying what they're saying about it's on planet and they've been talking about it for a few years now so oh, that's it seems it seems like it's real to me i've had uh one major encounter where i fully visually was inside the bed on a ship um, with stars outside uh, and then two other accounts that were lesser lesser visual accounts where I had asked for assistance and I woke up feeling great um, like, okay all right I'm liking the technology angle here yeah the technology is unfathomable people have no idea yeah. of the elegance uh, of the inheritance of what's coming our way. Elegance is a word I totally can relate. It's, it is what best describes this technology, elegance. Mm. Mm. Well, yeah, like that line of the ship, right? Mm. That, I, I just love that you know that line. That line was just like, oh. <laughs> That's it. That's the the scout ships, the Pleiadian scout ship from the the Federation. Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, that they use the Pleiadian model, but you know the Federation. There are many races together, but that that's mm -hmm. a very performant uh, ship. Yeah, a battleship as well. Wow. Mm -hmm. So like I'll it. I'll uh, I'll just finish off some of the battle scenes just to give a quick overview. <clears throat> please, please. Yeah, so um, the operation, global operations were as follows from my perspective. Um, different grid patterns from around the world, different sectors, different people, different operators have certain special um, sectors of land or, or operating theaters like Australia for one. Um, and mine was sort of North America, um, all the way down to uh, South America. It's just the, the top tip of South America, and I, I didn't go down there much. Um, so to give you an idea of some of the places, uh, it was everywhere. It was everywhere. I thought that the main tunneling systems that we've seen over the past, oh, I think it's been around for a few decades now that people yeah. have seen the, you know, the possible dumb lines underground around the world 
Well, uh, those lines matched up very nicely. So I, I became aware of where the main highways are. And I eventually correlated uh, the battle scenes that were surrounding some of those areas, as well as the five to 10 kilometer and a little close to the surface uh, dumps in those areas. So you'd be doing an operation, say in Idaho, and it's really intense and it, it, you survived it and it was bad. And then the next day or, or the same night, there's earthquakes. So that, that thing was happening again. So you're like, okay, there's this operations going well. So um, some of the, the big spots, Vancouver Island, BC, um, a lot of spots in Southern uh, BC and Washington State, Idaho, uh, Cold Lake Military Base, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, um, the Great Lakes, oh my God, the Great Lakes, is yeah the great lakes is infested with that infrastructure pretty much that whole area is dumbs you'll have a major dumb uh, underneath a military base or something and uh, it's starting to come out people are realizing like that's where the drugs go that's where the uh, prostitution and uh, trafficking rings go um, it's the same thing as the sailors from um, hundreds of years ago, uh, which reminds me of an operation I, I named Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> so the uh, half joking, mm. it's a double, double entendre there. Um, I went down there and I knew about uh, this couple hundred years ago where you've got pirates they're hustling booze, um, drugs, and liquor, and gold, and whatever else they're doing. So that was, you know, it was like 500 years ago, we hear those stories mm -hmm. up into the 1700s. Um, the same exact thing has been going on up to this point. It's just more elaborate and with more infrastructure and technology. And that's where they stash their gold as uh, we've heard about with some of these islands. So the missions through there and then uh, Cuba, I won't even mention it's, uh, yeah, it's a mess. Uh, so, so that whole area, uh, the same piracy that has been going on uh, for hundreds of years um, was happening at that point. And this is, this is last year, 2020, they were cleaning that up. So they've got a lot of retrieved uh, stuff and information from those locations from what I experienced there. Um, the whole Florida area gets hit a lot with this weather. Um, the missions that we're flying around there, there's a military base there. Uh, it was more towards the upper parts and then uh, getting into the coastline of um, Texas and then Georgia up Tornado Alley all the way up into um, the New York area. And that seemed to be the theater where I was operating a lot. And if you look at uh, the, the main underground dump bases, uh, highways, the, the, the maglev, the mag rail system, um, you'll see a picture of Orion and Gemini in the shape of these tunnels who were our friends from well not so much friends from orion yeah that, <laughs> but, that's typical but, yeah and the and, Ain yeah, and, yeah the ainana and, from a germany constellation as well they're, they're not, not good yeah exactly um so one happy experience i i remember from down there do you remember we had three hurricanes in a row um it must have been aprilish somewhere in there the hurricanes one of the hurricanes names was hurricane laura mm -hmm. yeah so um yeah. that was heading to land that was uh 
you don't really see three hurricanes in the in a row unless it's man, made by man. So uh, those three hurricanes were coming in hot and we're going to hit ground and cause thousands of people to die. And uh, I noticed the conductivity of whatever teams I was sensing out there were um, working on this very diligently. And the humans that are on the ground, are they're praying as well. You know, they, they see that there's a hurricane coming and uh, they're praying for their lives as they're seeing this hit their coast and uh we we disperse those as soon as they hit ground i was working in real time with a, a light worker down in mexico area and she says to me what do you want it to do what should we do with with three hurricanes yeah. uh, and uh i i said it's gonna fizzle just picture it fizzling and uh, it hit ground and it fizzled. And I think only six people died out of that. It could have been completely devastating at that mm -hmm. time. Um, so I, I was feeling the conductivity of the global mind out there increasing and the support teams of uh, these operations really being super effective. If you can stop three hurricanes, we're talking with some serious power here. And that was the people on the ground, I felt, a lot, too. That was the people like me and you on the ground yeah. saying, no, no, boom, fizzle, done, no. Yeah. So I was like, okay, all right, we, we, have, we have this power. I've dreamed about this since I was a child, that we have this power. And, and once we unify, we can, we can really make some, some peace and some clearing for this world with with such ways yes this is exactly the message to unify and uh, mm -hmm. yeah and uh, i let you um go in your... yeah um just more more scenes of of like i mentioned earlier where you'd see instead of seeing tail lights and headlights at night across a, a city and those would represent demons running through the street. Um, this is a common theme uh, running through all these different cities. Um, I believe it was Oklahoma City. Uh, there's a small lake there. And there was an anomaly under the lake and a live operation going on around it. It was probably the biggest battle scene I saw. So this is this is in an alternate realm you know you probably know better than i how to describe it but uh you're interfacing with this battle scene yeah. and uh i was levitating at the time no dragon riding on this one but uh i was levitating at the time and you're just sort of flying around scanning for things and and battling things there's a lot of engagement with the enemy um and i was surprised at this moment because i saw other people uh and they seemed very familiar so i knew they were my friends and i knew to go that direction that we were operating together these are probably yes. the, the invisible face faces of friends that, there, there's an alliance uh, with the 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 federation people and uh, the earth ground uh, military they they work together in this underground fighting together yeah. i yeah you, you saw this yeah it, it, it makes perfect sense now i, yeah. I mean it was the, the story i'm uh, was describing now yeah. you expressing it is like ah yes confirmation yeah so um there i am with 30 people kicking ass in oklahoma city <laughs> yeah. and it, it was a magnificent feeling it was very intense at first like uh the the enemy was very heavy and we had to clean things up very quickly and then it just turned into playful schoolyard laughter 30 of us got into a circle and were levitating above this lake and we were all laughing because we know there's legions of assistants surrounding us yeah and we're all laughing and i saw a woman i recognized across the way across the circle 
And I said, we're doing it. I screamed out and laughed and I said, we're doing it. And she screams and she's waving her hands like, oh my God, this is, it's actually happening. The time is actually happening now. We're involved in it. And our prayers were going into this lake I mentioned and the healing was happening. And I was seeing um, a lot of different faces, um, ET, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. A, a lot of different faces that were not human, but <laughs> involved in, 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 the, in the event. So, yeah, so yeah, could, um, could you describe this, this allies involved in this operation, this allies from um, upstairs, as I call it, uh, different races or um, it's difficult to remember? Yeah. Um, so that one was interesting. Uh, I saw a very tall blue man come by me and I made some silly snide remark to him and he sort of laughed at my face. <laughs> <laughs> I think I stepped out of line a little bit. I was over enthusiastic about the people levitating. So, <laughs> so I think he was wow. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of smirked at me, but he seemed like a very nice fellow. He seemed to be kicking ass. Um, that one there was an interesting event too uh i'll back up a little bit um we were clearing undergrounds it was it was just below surface level so just below regular house level that, that kind of deepness it wasn't very deep um but it was very intense there were a lot of hidden spaces we couldn't get to and we're getting frustrated that we couldn't get inside to see something i felt nature conspiring for the mission sort of like uh, our friends and myself were using all of nature to see into these spaces like crickets ants uh like all of nature was conspiring to feel and and, and free these spaces that was very interesting there um another face i've seen that you mentioned i'm not very good with names uh when i meet these beings i don't like names too much i'm just all about the face yeah the signature yeah um but uh, you have a picture of them on one of your last videos it's uh this uh your friend annex yes uh it had that kind of um face it looked very much like annex except uh the friend I met was very smiley and had very bright eyes. He seemed like a, a male type energy, but I haven't spent too much time with him, but I've seen that energy around a few times. And I think it's been sort of hidden from me, but um, not been announced to keep things secret. But I have seen that face a couple times and uh, friends have seen that face over me a couple times. And I'm like, okay. I guess I guess that's one of my friends. Yes, one of your protectors and friends. Um, that's mm. that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, in the have you seen? I know it's not not fun a question, but during the the operation, the the fights, have you have you witnessed and participate to confrontations with? the enemy, the different alien races, or you'd rather not talk about it? Yeah, I've had uh, direct contact, direct interface with those beings. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was quite devastating. Um, probably, so, just before I collapsed, just before May 5th, 2020, when I sort of stopped doing those major operations. Um, I can't remember where I was, uh, but I was in an underground tunnel. So this would be one of the times I mentioned earlier, you don't want to go too deep. Mm -hmm. but this would be one of those times I went too deep. Um, I experienced what looked like a a buffalo sized demon so picture a buffalo with the strength of a buffalo and then 
you know, put some garden variety demon face on it mm-hmm. and that walks on all fours. And this thing was, was very aggressive and it hit me hard. Um, it, it jumped, it jumped into me and left, uh, left some scars. That was, that was very difficult and disturbing. Um, there was that one that was that I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, yeah. That, that's fine. Yeah, it's fine. That's that fine. was that Thank one. You. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, um, the, the gray alien. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, yeah. So <sighs> they're definitely pesky maniacal creatures quite quite deadly when they want to be but more so the technology so um these yeah these things have high technology their bosses have them able to do anything of their will um they can produce a hologram that is real as what's real in front of you right now. Um, you, they can mess with time to mix you up. What I'm trying to describe is these things can very easily drive you crazy and have you chasing your tail in seconds if you're not wise to the scene. So these things I met quite often. Um, I mentioned that metaphor of black box technology. I was hunting for these devices. I ran into a lot of them um, in these these areas of of hunting in the cities. I had um, a couple in space experiences. I was on a ship in space and I saw these these guys. I think I got I snuck in there and got out quick, kind of thing. So um, very, yeah, very. Uh, very hard, hard experiences. There was some, some physical death involved um, on my part in, in one account. Um, I'm not sure what happened there, if I did something wrong, uh, but I, physic- I experienced physically strangling one to death. And yeah, I, I it would it'd been tor- it felt like it had been tormenting me my whole life was the who knows what the scenario was. It's very confusing. As I said, they torment you and they get you mixed around. But I actually somehow broke the controls and was able to touch this thing. And I I killed it. And killing is not good. You no. you don't want to do it. As a hunter, I, I've gone through the lessons of the hunter and those lessons are brutal. Um, and then after that happened, the next day I had three, three beings that came to my physical front door. So that was in this other battle realm. This is in 3D, my regular life. Um, so the next day after this happened, I, I, I still don't quite know what happened there. It, something very bad happened. And um, I had three beings at my front door that they looked like grays. So what, what I was looking at was three gray beings out of phase. They looked a little different than grays, but I mentioned they're out of phase, so it's kind of hard to see. And I'm a little shocked because there's a physical apparition at my front door just after I had this encounter with death. Um, They gave me the strangest, I still don't know what to make of it. It it seemed like they wanted to to come over to the light, maybe. They wanted us to stop hunting them, maybe. But they were projecting an emotion. They don't really project emotion. 
like we do. And they were projecting their interpretation of emotion. I still haven't made sense of that. And it's very disturbing. Do you think they they were originally um, an enemy grays that were coming to 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 tell you that they wanted to turn to to the light or where they actually want to to give that, you a lesson or and torment you to punish you to have been involved yeah that's that's the two questions because I, i i was looking at them and my first sense was stop killing us we're we're beat we want to come to the light we, we see the that we cannot win that there is no you guys kick ass like I, i'm riding a dragon <laughs> you do not want to come up against that thing that thing loves snatching up little things like that um and that was my first sense of it but then you've just been tormented by these things for months and you're like this is just another alien deception yes um, like I, oh I, I, we are nice stop doing yeah, this yeah, because yeah. finally we, we, we you know we we're all the same in light and love and peace and we don't need to fight you know that yeah. really sounds like a deception yeah so yeah yeah I, i'm sure once i get my qhtt session it'll all make sense <laughs> <laughs> I have someone very good to recommend you. Okay, yeah, it's necessary. <laughs> yes. Um, well, that's uh, what. What else do you want to? Would you like to share about? Um, is there something else you want, you want to share about these uh, these operations? Or it's been a lot of emotion uh, already. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's up to you. Um, probably probably good enough for right now but just yeah. to share just to share to our audience out there um we're extremely powerful we're unifying as a, a world we've been horribly abused for thousands of years and we've been incarnating into these spaces to nail this into no more of this world and escalate into this space of light. My point is we're powerful, we're human. We have to work together, we're in wartime. Uh, this is what it feels like. Be, be very grateful that we're not seeing it on the, on the streets um, as my forefathers uh, did in World War II. Um, my father came from Berlin, Germany. He saw, he, he was there at D-Day. Uh, when they dropped the bombs. So I know how lucky we are to be going through this. Um, and know that people are dying um, to save your life out there. Know that there are protectors and guardians out there um, yeah. that are saving a lot. They're doing a lot for us. So just be, be grateful and project the light into the grid, project the love into the grid, dance, enjoy into the grid and assist this transformation uh, this is the greatest moment in in history and we get to be a part of it and uh, i'm very grateful and honored to be flying with everybody right now this is amazing time wave what a, an amazing message to humanity um privilege to be here in this time to serve humanity to serve earth and not forgetting that we are more powerful than we have been made believe mm -hmm. um so uh -oh. yeah so a wonderful <laughs> a very very important message how what would what else would you say if you had something else to say to a message to pass to other humans on this planet for help to help going through these times um is there something particular uh, you want to add yeah yeah uh, creative imagination and dreams have been infiltrated um 
all sectors of humanity have been infiltrated and inverted. It's, it's okay to dismantle the old and let go of it. Uh, I, I'm human and I struggle with it all the time, just like everybody else out there. But uh, we've got a do over here. And if I can ride dragons and chuck lightning bolts to save the planet, what can you do? You can do all sorts of things. It, there's, there's hidden treasures within these gossamer threads spiraling through our DNA that are coming online now. Uh, we're, we're killing these, these handcuffs. We're inverting these handcuffs on our codes. And we're going to come back online hard. And there's going to be a lot of people doing some magical things. And that's okay. Um, move into that. Move into the delight in innocence of the childlike mind, the star child, if you will. It's a very real, innocent, divine space. And we can still be the warrior and strong within there. Um, we can balance this equation to come back into harmony. Because this, this once this operation's done, um, we're going to be healing each other. You're going to be petting your buddy's skin, saying everything's going to be okay. You're going to be um, nursing ourselves back into health and seeing this profound light come through uh, the natural world and uh, our systems of nature returning. Already the systems of nature are returning, you know, from this yeah. last year's of, of sitting in our room. It's amazing. Yes. Yeah. The unbelievable resilience of life. And this is on many, on all levels, life on all levels, be it mm. from nature to spirit, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How, how do you see the future? I see an amazing future. It's hard to tell with the timelines shifting in this sector of space right now that we're in, but I, I, I've seen a few visions of, of liberation. Um, there's an image I visit often. Uh, so after the operations are done, the humans open their heart. There's just such joy and excitement of liberation the entire world is dancing and people are flailing their hands in the air and smiling and light pouring out of our hearts in columns of light going up into the grid, traveling around the world and boom, we're unified. We're, we're free. All, there is no lack. The abundance is there. It's all coming. It's all there. And this is galactic. This is not just for our sacred, beautiful world. This is galactic. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We are galactic beings, you know. And yes. Surprise, surprise. Looking for ET. and <laughs> we, are, <laughs> we are in this galaxy. We are part of it as well. Um, yeah. You know, this vision you just described, um, this mm. is a vision I had too, um, a few months ago of mm. people dancing in the street shouting we are free we are free it's over and mm. embracing each other and so many mm. other people had the same vision and wow so this yeah. is going yeah to uh, and also on that note is um how how powerful those those energetic emails are uh we've become addicted to our computers and our phones uh, which takes away from our natural computer, our natural telepathy, which is far faster. The Wi-Fi is free. It's always on. <laughs> and and um, I've been sending that memo of, of that dancing uh, out since 2012. And I know of thousands and millions of people who, who've had that, that inkling of that image just how powerful that vote that that dolphin bubble of light and love into the world goes out and reaches many so use it yes yes we we all I'm, have this power yes it's time i'm so happy 
How well, wonderful. This is really, really exciting and hope, hope is here and hope starts in the present, isn't it? Um, Definitely. So on this amazing, amazing positive um, vision, which is reality and it is going to happen anyway, because it's there, it's ahead of us. Mm -hmm. um, I, I would like to thank you so much on behalf of everyone um, to share with us your experience, which is not always easy for you and we understand why, but it, it's a gift to you. You offer us this sharing of all your experience and um, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much, Star Child. Um, is there anything else you you wish last, your last words to to say and uh, before we be I, well? I, I thank you so much, and it's just been a, a pleasure and an honor to be with you today. And I just want to salute all the other team members out there who are working hard. Um, I see you out there, and you see me. Salute you and uh, more are coming into this and more are joining and flying with this this transformation now it's very exciting so thank you gratitude to everyone gratitude thank you <laughs>